your Bibles to the book of 1 John, chapter 4. 1 John, chapter 4. First John chapter 4, and we'll read, start reading there in verse number 1. First John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know me the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for each one here today. We pray if there's a lost soul in the congregation, you'd save them before it's too late. Pray for your people, God, you'd help us to live for you in these last days. Father, we thank you, God, that you're still on the throne, that you still hear and answer prayer. We praise you for all of this, God. You're such a great, wonderful God. We thank you, God. We ask, Lord, that your perfect will be done in this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We read here in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. And 1 John 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, implying that there's all kinds of spirits. But try the spirits, plural, whether they are of God. So some spirits are of God, some aren't. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come even now already is it in the world. I sure want to say it's in the world today. Because I want to preach a message entitled Demon Infested America. Demon Infested. Now, in the Bible, I don't believe the word demons is used. Devils, the other unclean spirits and things like that, those words are used. But I want to preach about Demon Infested America. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but man, we are living in a demon-infested country Amen. today. Infested, swarming, overrun, plague. Uh, Revelation 18, verse 2, uh, it talks there about Babylon during the tribulation. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. Become, Babylon's become the habitation of devils and, of, and, and hold of every foul spirit. It, it holds every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's Revelation 18 and verse 2. I want to say that it shows a nation completely infested with demons. The United States is kind of like a type of the commercial Babylon. The fallen nation is infested with demons. 
I went through the Bible. I, I don't have time to preach just a 35-minute message or so here this morning. I don't have time to go through all the different kinds of spirits that are mentioned in the Bible. But if you ever get your concordance out and look, you, you'll have a 50-point outline, I guarantee you, uh, probably. But I just want to give you a few of them here this morning. Spirits. Spirits. You ever heard people talk about, well, I, I got voices in my head telling me this. And I got, I know a lot of that's mental and biological things and required maybe some medication and things. I don't want to get all the doctor part of it, the mental issues. I'm not a doctor. But I want to tell you something, folks. We live, they, they've interviewed a lot of these serial killers. And when they interview them and they show them up close, they, you look in their face and their eyes, it's like there's nobody home. infested with demons. I want to say, first of all, they're seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. That's found in 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. How many times have you seen that happen since you've been saved? Where a Christian, a professing Christian, says they're saved, they're in a decent church for a while, and then all of a sudden they start, they leave and they fall for this cra crazy, wild, crackpot doctrine. They were seduced. Seduced means somebody takes you off the right path. You know, a woman can seduce a man uh, to, to depart, to remove, to instigate, to revolt, desert. Uh, to depart from the faith, not believing, not believing faith, but revealed truth, the Bible. Rebellion against truth and causing others to revolt. Seducing an imposter or misleader. It misleads you. Uh, there is a hatred in America against the Word of God, prayer, family values, and morality. As a matter of fact, in the last few years, We've got people going into stores and shoplifting and with armfuls of stuff. They show them on cameras, taking stuff out, and in some of these cities, they're not even prosecuted. They're not even, they're not even if they're put in jail, they're, they got immediately right back out. This is the day and time that we live in. Seducing spirits. I'm talking about spiritual seducing spirits, uh, taking people away from the Word of God and the things of God, uh, immoral type stuff. We'll get into that more later but seducing spirits. And uh, there is a hatred in America. It's going to get worse. The love of many shall wax cold, Jesus said in Matthew 24. And this is the day and time that we live in. You, have you ever seen so many crazy different beliefs that people have? You try to talk to them about the Word of God, and the devil has seduced them. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, we're in the latter times. If we're not in the latter times, I don't know when the latter times are. Some shall depart from the faith. Now that is not unsaved people. Unsaved people aren't even in the faith. These are people that depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. So they give heed to the seducing spirits. The seducing spirits must come through their mind and tell them a bunch of false stuff or from other through other people. I mean, how else could it, I mean, you know, has to be verbal from somebody else verbally or it has to be in their own mind. But I've never seen such, I mean, I've only been saved for 45 years. Some of you have been saved longer than that. But just the decline each decade in our country of people holding to the foundational truths of the Word of God they're seducing spirits. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. What else did Paul say? In 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4, he talked about this another spirit. 2 Corinthians 11.4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, I really believe, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, 
But I really believe these people that have so called talked in this blibber blabber jibber jabberish heavenly language tongue that they call that, which is not in the Bible. Tongues in the Bible are just foreign languages. But this so called and got them to become unhinged, I believe they received another spirit. They received another spirit. How do you receive? How do you, how does this seducing spirit overcome a person like that? Because they don't believe the truth, they depart from the faith. The yeah. spirit speaks, expressing that in latter times, some shall depart from the faith. When you depart from the faith, you give heed to seducing spirits. Right. The reason why people are uh, noticing people now, some of it might be mental or biological, or you know, they might have some issues. All right, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist, you know, or whatever. But 95% of people in America that get involved in that kind of junk, what it is, they rejected the truth of the Word of God. Or at least 90% of them. They rejected the truth of the Word of God. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's a lot of doctrines out here that people believe that are not according to the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 11.4 For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus... And we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So he talks about another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And man, we've got them all over America today. All over America. And so back to 1 John 4. First of all, I can preach an hour on this first point, but there's seducing spirits. Secondly, there's unclean spirits. Unclean spirits in Luke 8 27 it's about the demoniac of Gadara. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes. People that are full of devils and unclean spirits, they usually like to run around naked. Neither abode in any house, didn't have a home, but in the tombs. And then in verse 29, it says an unclean spirit is mentioned there in Luke 8, 29. Unclean, impure, lewd. When a person has a demon a long time, it says they're met in a certain man which had devils long time. They don't like to wear any clothes. They want to hang around dead people in the cemetery. And the application is they like to hang around unsaved people because unsaved people are spiritually dead. Now I love unsaved people. I want to get it. I want to see every unsaved person in the world saved. But I don't go hobnob. I know you got to work with them sometimes. So I'm not, we're not talking about stuff like that. But just to have to be around unsaved people all the time, I've never done that since I got saved. I, I love unsaved people. I've had to work with unsaved people. And then you sometimes you got to get around unsaved relatives. I understand that family members. I understand. God knows about all this. But I'm talking about just voluntarily hobnobbing around with unsaved people that don't love God and don't love the Word of God and don't love the Church of God or anything in the Bible or anything else. We ought not to do that according to the Bible. And so uh, in Exodus 32, 25, you've got idol worshipers and dancing going on there and uh, unclean spirits. I'm telling you what, we've got people chock full today in America with unclean spirits. You say, how do I know if I have an unclean spirit or a seducing spirit messing with me and trying to get me away? You know what? Every once in a while, I just pray. Just say, God, I pray any unclean spirit in our church service, any unclean spirits in me, dear Lord, or any unclean spirits in my family members or whoever or whatever, God, I pray you get them out. I pray, God, you get them. Uh, they'd all uh, be gone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unclean spirits. Thirdly, let me move along. I got eight of these. I got to get these in. Third one is lying spirits. 1 Kings 22, 22. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. That's 1 Kings 22 and verse 23. 1 Kings uh, 22 and verse 23. And so we have what we have there is lying spirit. Untrue. Uh, a cheat, a sham, deceitful. And 1 Kings 22, verse 23, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. I've gone over this before, but condense all this down. 
The Lord put a lying spirit. If a person doesn't want the truth, God will allow them to accept falsehood and false truth. If a person doesn't want to believe that there's a hell according to the word of God, they'll allow, God will allow or have a Jehovah's Witness come by their door and show by the New World Translation that there is no hell. As a matter of fact, God will let a person have what they want. If a person doesn't want to believe the truth, God will send them a, a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. People say, why is there so many false religions and cults and different things? Because people don't want the truth of the Word of God. If a person wants the truth, God will get the truth to you. God said, uh, uh, Peter, Cornelius wants the truth. He's praying, he's fasting, he's giving alms. He's a just man. He's, I don't know, there's six or seven things mentioned in Acts 10. I mentioned in Sunday school. But he's lost. Peter, I want you to get the gospel to him. Of course, Peter fussed with the Lord about it. Because he said he's unclean. He's a Gentile. But the gospel was going to the Gentiles. A lying spirit. Jehoshaphat summoned 400 prophets to ask them if it was right to go to war with Syria. That's in that chapter. I don't have time to read the whole chapter. 1 Kings 22. 400 prophets said in verse 6, sure, it's all right. But they weren't satisfied. They called for Micaiah. And they knew what they told Micaiah in that chapter? They said, why don't you speak like all the other prophets have spoken? Speak good. Speak good. And you know what he told them? Basically he said, I'm going to speak what God tells me to speak. Woo, amen. And he basically had a negative report so there was going to be a big slaughter. They didn't want the truth. When a preacher says that something is right, when God says it's wrong, he's got a lying spirit. we got so-called preachers across America that say that homosexuality and lesbianism and transgender stuff is all right. No, it's not. It's against God. Transgender. Can you imagine me, a male, trying to be a female? In other words, they're saying, God, I don't agree with what you made me. I want to be something other than that. I, I said this a few years ago when the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the homosexuals and lesbians, they get married. I said they will not stop at this. It'll be something even more perverse. And more. And it, it wasn't a year or two, this transgender stuff started real big. This old flesh is so wicked. You give it an inch, it'll take a mile. It's so rotten and corrupt. If a preacher or a Christian, a so-called Christian or a religious person, says that abortion is all right, when the Bible says it's not, they're wrong. Lying spirit. The Lord said, I have deceived that prophet. Ezekiel 14 talks about this. 1 Kings 22, there are examples in the Bible where somebody didn't want the truth and God sent them strong delusion. That's with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, 2 Thessalonians 2.10, and then that perish, and then that perish, that's go to hell, perish. Should not perish by everlasting life, John 3.16. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, Here's the reason why. Because they received not the love of the truth. They didn't want the truth. Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, what cause? Because they didn't receive the love of the truth, they didn't want truth. I don't want to believe in hell. I attend the kingdom hall. I don't want to believe in hell. That's why I go to the Jehovah's Witness kingdom hall, people have said. It's a heart matter. I go to the Mormon church because of this. I, I'm a Catholic because of this. Yeah, but the Bible says you've got to be born again. The Bible said, I, I've got my religion. That's what they want. It's like, and I've said it, and you probably get tired of me saying it. Dr. Don Green said, Brother Steve, I've learned through the years that most people have just about as much God as they want to have. They go where they want to go. They spend money on what they want to spend money on. <clears throat> Americans. I'm talking about America, baby. I'm talking about America. 
They spend money on what they want to spend money on. They go where they want to go. And they have about as much God as they want. And Homer Smith said they like pearl cream religion, a little dab will do you. That's what most people want. Just a little dab. Lying spirit. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and then the perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not the devil, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But one place in the Bible talks about they made, they made lies their refuge. Their refuge, their shield, their refuge is a bunch of lies. And that's what you got. You say, what do you mean? King James Bible. You got all these new versions. And a lot of Christians love the new versions. Uh, don't believe in eternal security. Uh, Hyper-Calvinism. All right? You wouldn't believe the preachers I've talked to in the last 10 years, 15 years, that have got on the internet and started watching some preacher, so-called, and some hyper-Calvinist, and convinced them to get out of their church and to follow them on the internet, and they were some hy they were hyper calvinists Absolute predestination, all that kind of stuff, got wrapped up in that kind of junk. And you get involved in that kind of stuff, you don't really know what the Bible says about it, it'll just mess you up. Hyper-Calvinism. The tongues and healing. What tongues really are. About healing. God still healed, but there's no faith healers. All that. The truths about all these subjects. Water baptism don't save you. It's not a part of salvation. We went over a little bit about the book of Acts there. Different, it's a transitional book. Rightly dividing the word. All this. When you deal with the average person in this country that we live in today, you've got to get through all the muck and the mire and talk through all about all the junk they've been taught all the cobwebs before you can even start dealing about basic things. Well, what about that? Doesn't that, Bible say, doesn't that one verse say over there? They know just enough Bible to be dangerous or to, to damn their soul. It's sad. It's sad. Lying spirits. And then number four, Deaf, deaf, D-E-A-F, deaf spirits. Mark 9.25, a deaf spirit's mentioned. Mark 9.25, deaf spirit. Matthew 13.15, their ears are dull of hearing. Dull is heavy, burdensome, sluggish, lazy. Ephesians 4.18 says, having the understanding darkened. Deaf spirits can stop up the physical ear, but also the ear of the soul. Stop up the understanding and stop up the reasoning of man. Folks, this generation in America is tired of hearing about sin and about doing right. Now, a lot of people, they don't want to hear about it anymore. Leave us alone. Demons, devils, death spirits have taken away their reasoning. Common sense tells you that sin has wages. No sane man would want to go to hell. I mean, think about it. Who wants to go to hell and burn forever and never get out? Paul said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Here it is. But the time shall come, and we are in that time now, when they shall not endure sound doctrine. So what do they do? They go to the big mega church, the big contemporary rock church, where they can have their new versions, their rock music. I thank God we got the right Bible, the right music, Amen. and the right doctrine. Amen. Amen. A lot of churches don't. They really don't. I'm not saying all churches, but a lot of them don't. For the time shall come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. See, they got their own personal lust and desires. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. From the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. That's the time we've been living in the last 60, 70 years. 
Deaf spirits. Number five, dumb spirits. Dumb. Unbelief brings a dumb spirit. In Luke one, uh, Luke one twenty, the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter one, and verse twenty, Zacharias didn't believe God about John. He said, "What are you talking about? He couldn't speak." Luke one eighteen, and Zacharias said unto the angel, "Whereby, whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man, and my wife well stricken in years." The angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, verse 20, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able to speak. Well, dumb doesn't mean they're dumb, like stupid. The dumb means they can't speak. Behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. Well, we need some people to tarry long in the temple. Dumb spirits. Zacharias didn't believe God about John. He couldn't speak. Isaiah 1.3, rebellion brings a dumb spirit. Isaiah 1.3, the ox knoweth his under and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider just this generation, people's nerves are shot. They don't want to pray. They don't, they don't know how to pray. They don't want to pray. They don't want to seek God. <coughs> Dumb spirits. Couldn't speak. People can't speak to God. They don't want to talk to God. I'll tell you what. We're, we're getting a day and time where people don't even talk to each other. Yeah. I, have, I can't tell you the number of times that I've been in a restaurant in the past five, ten years. And I watch people. It isn't, it isn't just young people. It's people in their 40s, 50s. 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. It ain't just teenagers. There'll be two, three, four, five people at a table, and they'll all be sitting there. <laughs> they don't take their face off of that phone for 20, 30, 40 minutes and look at any, anybody sitting with them, a waiter, a waitress, the restaurant, the menu, or nothing, baby. They're addicted. They don't even talk to each other. They don't even speak to each other. I watch them. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't sit there going like this <laughs> and look out of my cat. But I, you know, I kind of keep an eye on them. You know, you know, talking to you know my wife or whoever. But I kind of watch them. You know, and they don't even look at each other. They don't even talk to each other. I mean, that's the way we're living. That's the kind of society that we're living in. I tell you what, it's it's all moving towards the antichrist. Yeah. Chip and all that stuff. He's going to be able to. He's going to be able to know where people are at. Everything. Uh, dumb spirits. Number six. Foul spirits. Foul spirits. I read you the verse in uh, Revelation eighteen two at the beginning of the message. Revelation eighteen and uh, verse two. Revelation eighteen two. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Foul spirit. Foul means dirty and filthy. Foul represents any kind of dirty, filthy, immoral, sexual sin, sodomites, Pornography, perverted lifestyles. It's a learned behavior. People aren't born that way. If it were not, if it weren't a thing of the, 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 it's a learned behavior, if it were not a learned behavior, there'd be sodomites among animals. You've never seen one. And now we're living in a day and time, not only the sodomites, the homos and the lesbians, now you don't even know when you look at somebody if they're a man or a woman. Yeah, right. And if you call him, her, or her, him, they bring a lawsuit against you. Yeah. And you're, you're trampling on my rights. My name was 
Jenny, but now it's Jerry. My name was Paul, but now it's Patty. What a corrupt, wicked society that we're living in today. In this country, they have been given uh, mar marital status, get married, Supreme Court ruled a few years ago. And I was one of the few preachers on and on the radio. I, you say, how do you know? You don't listen to every preacher in America. No, I don't listen to every preacher in America. But I listen to preachers in the whole region of this area. That's on the radio. And I was one of very, 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 very few that said anything about it on the radio. A lot of them were scared to death. Their deacon board might kick them out. Or the church might vote them out. You think I'm worried about that? Not one iota. <clears throat> Never have been. Transgender. So now we got this. We got. Uh, oh, I, oh! Don't even get me started. I will be here all day. I see the other day on the news where this man who's turned into a woman is what is she a swimming or golfing or something? somewhere in the country, and, of course, beat all the women by a mile on everything that, that, she's doing, that he, she, or she, or whatever it is, is doing. And now we got men in women's sports. So are you going to let these men who say they're women, are you going to let these men be in the uh, locker rooms where the showers and everything are at of women? Because he says, I'm a woman now. Can you believe that we're even talking about stuff like this? This is the kind of spirits we got in America. And we got politicians that believe it's all right to abort a baby. But not only abort a baby, but abort a baby right up to the time that the, the woman's getting ready to have the baby. And the... the, the one uh, Virginia governor, not in there now, they got rid of him, but he said there a few years ago that it's all right, and a few others around the country, that to, have, to abort the baby after the baby's born, to kill the baby if you don't want it. There's a spirit involved in that. It's a demoniac, filthy, foul spirit. Transgender. You don't even know when you look at somebody anymore if it's a man or a woman. You can kind of tell in some, some cases, but some cases you can't. There's times we'll be, we'll be in a store or we'll be in a restaurant or somewhere, and I'll ask my wife. I say it real low. I don't make a scene. Tony, is that a man or a woman? Sometimes she don't know, or she'll say it's a man, Steve, or it's a woman, or it's a woman trying to be a man, or a man trying to be a woman. They're given marital status, minority status, rights to adopt. Uh, they're, I don't know if they're still inducting them in the Army and the armed services, or it'll destroy the armed services. I mean, you can't. A few years ago, back in the 90s, they were allowing. Uh, the barracks, they were allowing men and women to sleep in the same barracks. And you know what? Lo and behold, the, the, the government couldn't understand the pregnancy rate skyrocketed when they allowed that. Now, isn't that hard to figure out? The pregnancy rate skyrocketed in the barracks. And the armed services. Because they were allowing men and women to be in the same barracks. And they, they were scratching their head and being serious. They... Ooh, I'd like to kick him right in the backside. Uh, foul spirits. And then quickly, let me give this number seven. Familiar spirits. Familiar spirits, Leviticus 20, 27. Leviticus 20, verse 27. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit 
or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. This is a demon-possessed person who communicates with the spirit world. I wouldn't have a Ouija board and all that kind of stuff. Who's that little guy named Chucky? That's a little character on TV. He's a little demon-possessed thing. and Does he murder people? Has people murdered and slaughtered and butchered and everything else? Imagine people in America sitting up at night. This started 40 years ago. This started 40 years ago. Sitting up at night on Saturday night watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre where they take chainsaws and chainsaw people's body parts up. Blood, guts, and brains, muscles, tissue, splattered everywhere on the walls. And they come, some of them, come into church the next morning, whatever church they're in, and the preacher has to stand up and preach the Word of God and get them stimulated to the things of God and get them thinking about the things of God. After they sat up half the night, Saturday night, watching a bunch of perverted, ungodly, filthy junk. And you wonder why our country's going to hell? That's one of 10,000 reasons. It's over. It's over. This train, I hope it does, hope it wrong. I'll, I'll eat crow. I'll say that I was wrong. But this train, the United States spiritual train track, it ain't getting back on the train track. Too far off. People are so used to their wicked, filthy, perverted, ungodly, gross ways. 1 Samuel 28, 7, Paul was condemned because he sought the witch of Endor to contact Samuel. 1 Samuel 28. One of the wildest chapters of the Bible as far as I'm concerned. I don't understand a lot of that. I have to be honest with you. Saul contacting Samuel. It says that it's abomination. We won't turn to it. It's in Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 to 12 also. But about the wizards, familiar spirits, wizards, all those type of things. Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 to 12. But television, newspapers, magazines are filled with horoscopes, psychics. About every small town in America has some psychic. It's usually some woman in there. You go in there and you pay her some money, and she looks at your hands and the, and the lines in the, on your hands and your forehead, and she'll tell you, oh, yes, oh, yeah, you're going to get married. You'll be married in two years, and you're going to marry a millionaire. And you're going to, oh, you'll be rich. And, you're, and you'll, you'll live in St. Louis, Missouri, and you'll... <laughs> and Americans just think that's so wonderful. They're so stupid. See why I don't have hundreds of people coming to my church? Uh... Television, newspapers, Mac, this, is all, this is how I've preached for 44 years. I, this, this is the only way I know how to preach. I never have tried. I never have tried to cut my message to get a big congregation. I just never have done it. Sorry. Television, newspapers, magazines are filled with horoscopes, psychics, Satanism, promising health, wealth, and a new happy home. Same as these faith healers on TV. Damning people's souls and messing people's lives up. Yeah. Been going on for years, honey. Four or five decades. Yeah. Five decades at least. Since the 50s and 60s. And look at us sitting here in the 21st century. Familiar spirits. Boy, I, I like to preach an hour on that one right there, but let me go to this last one here. And then there's evil spirits. Evil spirits. Turn to Luke 8 and we'll close. Luke 8. I did that over there at Neehouse the other day, preaching the revival. I'd say, man, turn over here and we'll close. And 10, 15 minutes later, I hadn't closed yet. And I said, well, turn here and we'll close. 
Brother Niehaus was making mention of it and was laughing about it. He said, yeah, Brother Kogel. He said, when a preacher says they're closing, that means 30 minutes from the time they said they're going to close. <laughs> Jack Hiles used to get up and say, I, he said, I love the clothes. He said, I just close and close and close and close. <laughs> and, close. and closing makes you feel a little better because you think he's almost done. But anyways, Luke chapter 8. I guess a preacher really shouldn't say that because he's going to go on for another 20 minutes because he's kind of lying, but uh, it's kind of a lying spirit, I guess. But anyways, Luke 8, verse 1, it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene. She was at the resurrection of Christ. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Seven devils come out of her. She was one of the ones there. Uh, the rest, at the resurrection, the end of the Gospels. So, this here has been healed of evil spirits. Evil spirits in Luke 8, verse 2. As I close, evil means to cause harm, to cause injury, to cause wickedness, to cause trouble. Paul said that this also in the last days perilous times shall come. 2 Timothy 3, 1. Perilous. Fierce, violent. You know they got a thing in New York going now? I forget what they call it. The, the whole object is is to go up behind somebody and haul off and bust them as hard as you can upside the head and they fall down. And the more they fall and the more they're hurt and the more they squirm around and their eyes go back in their head, the better success you are. They showed, they showed it on News Fox News there the other day. Some guy, some guy's just standing around. I guess there's a guy behind him. He comes up right behind him. The guy don't even know what hit him. I mean, he's, he's just standing there looking around in New York City there. And this guy comes up behind him and just, I mean, just bust him as hard as he can right on the side of the head. And I forget what they call it. It's a game they the, the, the people play in New York. Huh? Yeah. It's called sucker punching. It's a game. That's the day and time we're living in. <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs> so you go to prison. Self-defense. Cameras everywhere. You can't pick your nose today without somebody seeing you on camera. <laughs> I'm serious. Every bit. You go down, to, go down to town Hillsborough. And look, just walk around and look at the number of buildings everywhere that have cameras out on the streets, alleyways, everywhere. Check it out sometime. I said I was defending myself. You see him hit me. See him hit me there, busting right upside the head. Well, did you have to kill him? Did you have to shoot him? Well, yeah, I thought he was going to kill me. I wouldn't want to do it because you said he brought him to hell, probably. You know, J. Frank Norris shot a man, killed him. He got wind of the fact that this guy was coming. This was back in the 30s or 40s. And J. Frank Norris preached against liquor. And this guy was a liquor guy. And he, this guy was, said, I'm going to kill J. Frank Norris. He had a gun. He went to his office. He came in there and pulled out his gun to kill him. J. Frank Norris got his gun and shot him to kill him. But J. Frank Norris said, that was the darkest day in my life. Evil spirits, serial killers, violent murders, sick killers. Jeffrey Dahmer, where in Milwaukee, a few years ago, he 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 lure these guys in these gay bars, sodomite bars, to his apartment and kill them and chop them up and eat eat their bodies. 
You say, that guy's crazy. He ain't just crazy. He's full of demons. Evil spirits. Charles Manson. You ever looked in Charles Manson's eyes when they showed him on TV through the years? Something wrong somewhere, honey. I don't know what happened, when it happened to him, or what. There's some demon activity going on inside that guy. Every day, newspapers, television, filled with violent murders, rapes, incest, abuse, killings. We must protect ourselves against demons. How are we to do that? 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed giving to seducing spirits. No one ever gets possessed by devils, evil spirits, until they depart from the faith. You say, what about unsaved people? They don't want the faith. They don't want truth. It all boils down to unsaved or backslidden Christians not taking heed to truth. Not accepting truth, getting saved or serving God, walking away from the Lord, backsliding like Lot, like David committing adultery, like Noah getting drunk. You know, we go on and on and on. I go on all day long. No, no one choosing light, the light, Jesus is the light. No one choosing light and right instead of wrong can be invaded by the forces of darkness. Rejection of truth lays one open to wandering spirits. Rejecting truth will lay you open to these evil, familiar, seducing, all these spirits that I mentioned and probably a bunch more I never even mentioned. They're all over this country. Floating around in the air, principalities of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And they're in people. So just keep accepting truth. Amen? And keep learning truth of the Word of God. Let's stand if you would.